Hey y'all, it's Steven Van Kampen Lewis on March 20th, although I'm gonna release this video on the 26th. But this is the time of the year when I'm looking at the forecast to start putting my, my orchids outside. And I think, I think we're, we're getting there. So, uh, and that's really for two reasons. Uh, A, the, the nighttime temperatures are, are getting to be 55-ish and above, uh, 55 Fahrenheit. And the, um, and the daytime temperatures are, are so hot that uh, it's really getting incredibly warm inside my greenhouse. Uh, even with the vent that comes on automatically, I just can't cool it without some sort of specialized uh, equipment. And, and I'm not going to do that since, since I'm in the process of moving. So I, uh, I'm really looking to get the orchids outside. Uh, and it, this kind of this time of year can be really hot and then really cold. So uh, it's 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 kind of frustrating if you're an orchid grower who's going from indoor growing to outdoor growing here in Texas. So uh, I'm going to show you actually my Phalaenopsis collection, and one of those fails is one that hates the heat. And um, well, well, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But, uh, you know, I really wanted to just chat with you about my, my Phalaenopsis collection. It's not huge, and uh, I, ha I have been growing them uh, for not very long. Although I did have, um, uh, I did have a Phalaenopsis michalitzii hybrid. So I got this keiki some years ago. It was labeled as michalitzii, and then it bloomed out last year, I think, either 2020 or 2021. And it it was it was a it was a cross, and so I got rid of it. But that that particular plant really showed me that the the summer blooming uh, Phalaenopsis or that section Polykilos uh, really does like the Texas heat. So that was important to me, and I can use that as that sort of a uh, couple years of growing outdoors to show that you know hey these guys do just great in our Texas heat in our Texas summers, and. So I've kind of expanded the collection a little bit, but I'm also gonna show you one that really hates the heat. And uh, it's, it's kind of a sad little story and it's gonna be a bit of a, a rehabilitation story if it works. So let's, uh, let's turn the camera around and, and check out the good, the bad, and the ugly. All right, here we are in full sun here in Texas. And as you probably know, if you're a Phalaenopsis grower, you're probably saying, oh my God, get those fails out of that direct sun and I will do so quickly. But uh, in the meantime, I wanted to, to get some good light to show you, uh, like I said, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And let's actually start with the good. So this is Tetraspis and it is a, a Cerulea. I got this one at the, the Tamiami show that was in October 2021. I saw this little guy, or I saw one of its relatives blooming, I think, and, and I just, uh, I I didn't pick it up, and then uh, I kind of kicked myself, and, and uh, I really liked this Cerulea to, to Traspis, and uh, I went back and grabbed another one, and uh, it's, it's just such a neat little flower. Uh, it is pleasantly fragrant, and it has that, that cool, this is the first bloom, so it has that cool tetraspis ability where every bloom, the coloration is going to be a little different. So you can see that this, this particular um, uh, petal here, uh, excuse me, this lateral sepal here is, uh, is white and the rest is cerulea. So each blooming, you know, a different segment or petal or sepal could potentially be cerulea or white, uh, which is, is really cool. Uh, it's it's a nice little flower. I don't know if you can see it's sort of glistening in the sun here, but uh, um, I'm, I'm pleased with this first bloom. I, I hope that some of the wonkiness of the shape, you know, it's it's not quite symmetrical. There's a little mechanical damage down here. Uh, and I, I'm hoping that that goes away on subsequent blooms. Of course, as many of you fail growers out there know, you do not cut the spikes on these guys because they are they will rebloom on them. So, you know, I'm growing this in sphagnum, 
in a clear pot with some epi web on the bottom and I did just water this today so it's especially damp but I would say I'm going about 10 days between watering uh, this time of year you know during summer I, I will when it's growing outside I'll hit it with water every day actually you can see some ferns growing down there right now so I might have to deal with that at some point if they become a problem which they usually do this is another one this is to also a cerulea tetraspis uh, that originally came from brookside orchids but i picked up this week from my friend elena here in town she is getting rid of a lot of her collection and so i i saw that she had a couple of these for sale and so i snagged them and, and you can see that this one has bloomed before so i don't know what the flowers look like but there are active buds here and like i said these spikes they just until they turn brown and shrivel up and die, you just leave them and each year you'll get more and more spikes, ideally, and more and more flowers every year. So I'm really excited to see this. I grow both of these fairly bright in south-facing windows with some shade from oak trees. Uh, that was true for this one all this past winter in my house and then even in my apartment I'm growing them uh, in the same manner. So they, they do appreciate higher light than what a lot of people give them. Um, and I used this uh, interest, this sort of newly found interest in section polykilos to, to grab a fail Ludemaniana cerulea from big leaf orchids up there in the Dallas area. Um, as you can see by the flower here, the, this is just a really cool, stunning flower um, at least you know the the heritage of, of where this came from I'm really excited to see this one bloom hopefully in the near future I'm also growing it fairly bright in a south facing window with uh, shade from oak trees making the light dappled you can see I've got the um, uh, the slow release fertilizer here and sphagnum here on the bottom with epi web excuse me sphagnum on top with epi web on the bottom and um, also watering once every week or two I guess at this point actually before I move on I'm gonna pop this one up in uh, sphagnum as well it's in it's in bark and it dries out a little little more quickly than I like I like to have all my my plants growing the same way so that it's easy to water and I don't have to deal with uh, giving individual plants individualized conditions I just like to hit everything at the same time uh, each day and this we saw the good. This represents the bad and the ugly. This is Phalaenopsis japonica, or uh, used to be called Sedarea japonica, and it is absolutely gorgeous. In fact, I'm going to show you what this plant looked like only a few years ago. I'm going to show you its blooms, and you can see why I am pretty sad that it looks the way it does. This one is a cool growing plant, or an intermediate, I guess, is, is probably more accurate. What happened this past summer of uh, summer 2021, I let it stay outside a little while longer and it started dropping its leaves. I mean, it's, it's really interesting to see. In fact, what happens is when it gets heat stressed, the, the base of each leaf will turn yellow and will just fall off. And so I, I it, and it happens in like a day. So um, it was really quick. I, I saw it happen and I was like, well, let's just, let's see what happens if I leave it outside all summer. And it basically, it grew, it, it shrank back and then started a new little growth here. And I said, okay, great. Well, I've, my experiment of torturing this plant has run its course. Now here in 2022, I'm gonna grow this back to its former glory. Well, uh, like I mentioned, my greenhouse gets really, really hot this time of year by accident, and it did. And this little growth here dropped all of its leaves again, except for these last two. And it was probably two, twice as big. So I, it was well on its way to healing. I am very sad that I tortured it again. So now it's living in my apartment right now where, um, where it's getting more appropriate conditions. It's still getting bright light. Uh, for all the years that I've grown this one, I've grown it 
fairly bright actually next to my Cattleyas. Uh, it likes to dry out much more quickly in my experience than the other Phalaenopsis. So, um, but right now in this pot and with this media, I think it dries out too quickly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna repot it into sphagnum. Uh, it will, the sphagnum will be not quite as thick as this, maybe half, so that it still retains moisture, but it does not stay nearly as wet for nearly as long. And um, I suspect that this one will bounce back. I, honestly, I have to say that normally a plant like this, under my care, if it if it took a hit like this, I would just throw it away. But in fact, I almost threw this one away, and then I, I remembered how gorgeous these blooms are. I went back to my phone and looked it up, and I was like, wow, I just can't toss this one. It is absolutely just way too nice. So I'm going to nurse this one along, and, and, and I'll give you guys updates and see if we can get it back to blooming size this time by this time in 2023 i suspect i suspect it, it will it, it's not a particularly finicky plant it just can't take heat so uh keeping it on my windowsill in whatever you know my current apartment and my future home here in the next little while uh will i, I suspect it'll bounce back quite nicely anyway i hope you all are having a wonderful weekend and I will talk to you later. Bye.